This conference will... Okay, yesterday we were talking about something related to roles. That is where I think most of you got confused. Let me explain once again this user authorization and roles. Normally, we came to this topic of roles and authorizations of the testing. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Sorry, Ajay, sorry to disturb you. Just I had one question with uh, there was some uh, internal, sorry, there was some internal client call I have. Uh, just you asked me that what are the prerequisites uh, you take for the asset balances uh, from legacy system. Then I just say, but it was there was some issue with network so that he, he, he scheduled to for tomorrow. But uh, my answer, I said that uh, after getting this trial balance and we see that asset and the pre equation of assets and also the depreciation. And then I explained about the methods and everything. So what I have to, what I have to tell him if suppose if the same question is asked. You just need to mention that when it is coming to your asset migration, you will take the trial balance. From the trial balance, you will get asset wise closing balance. In short, for every asset, there will be a GL account, control account or reconciliation account. If you're talking about plant and machinery, there will be a GL account called plant and machinery in your balance sheet. For all these accounts, there will be a detailed breakup at asset wise. When each asset was purchased, what is the depreciation until your cutover month? In short, the trial balance month. Get the detailed information about all the assets. From this, all the asset, you segregate assets which are purchased in current year assets which are purchased in prior year and when you're creating the master record you will be creating a master in two ways one number one asset purchased in the prior year will be created as legacy asset using as 91 in as 91 you will be updating the capitalization date because the asset is not capitalized current year it was capitalized in the previous years to capitalized asset in previous year you must use as 91 after that you will be creating as01 for the current year asset once the master is created if it is ecc you will be using as91 itself to load the asset balances into the prior year assets and the bdc upload or jv upload for current year asset if you are working on s4 hana you will be using abldt for both current year and prior year asset acquisition data or you can even use LTMC template for this. Clear? Sure. Clear. Clear. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay. We were talking about yes, unit testing yesterday. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So for it. Ah, you know if you surprise me now. Ah, but you know if you surprise me, not possible. Sorry, if you're asking me, I did not get your question. Please mute yourself, sir, please. Yeah, real quick, sir, uh, Mr. J. I see that a lot of people are asking um, interview type questions. I would suggest that uh, we go through the process slowly as uh, some of us here are following the things and then you can ask your questions later. Thank you. Yes. All right, so any questions you have, make sure you put them in the chat box. I'll answer your questions once we're done with the session. Okay. Okay. Sorry, it was kind of urgent. So I don't repeat. No problem. Thank you. Okay, in the unit testing, we were talking, this unit testing is performed in the development system. And we were also talking about user acceptance testing this user acceptance testing is done in the quality system unit testing is done in the development system user acceptance test is done in the quality system now this is by Pico consultant. This is by end user.
unit testing is done by FICO consultant UAT is done by end user now this is by consultant user ID this is by end user user ID and the next point so no authorizations error here when you are performing unit testing or whenever you are using your user id consultant user id majoritily we will not be receiving any authorization errors and here possible authorization errors when you are testing with user id or end user id there are possible scenarios of getting authorization errors now why we we will get this and what exactly you will do in the unit testing let us try to understand once again so we thought that when you are implementing sap fico you will be implementing based on something called scope scope is nothing but the points or the modules that you are going to implement this is scope you are going to get from business blueprint or solution design document your scope or your business blueprint solution design document is going to explain what points you are going to configure what points you are going to implement the business processes which are proposed and which are agreed by the client are included in the scope document and in the business blueprint solution design document based on this business blueprint solution design document you are going to perform configuration you will be performing a configuration once configuration is completed you will be performing testing in short let me write unit testing will be performed to perform unit testing i'll put unit testing based on test scripts unit testing based on the test script now this test script based on bpml document bpml is nothing but now bpml is nothing but list of transactions to be used by client whatever the transactions which will be used by your client all these transactions will be listed as bpml in short business process master list based on the business process master list we will be creating a test script or test case document this test case document or the test script scenarios will be executed by sap fico consultant in the development system when you are executing this in the development system you need to make sure each and every activity you are logging into the system you are performing all these things whenever you are talking about testing testing is pure end user activity when we are talking about testing testing is a pure end user activity in short all your end user activities are related to three areas end user activities point number one master data point number two transaction data point number three reports these three are your end user activities your test script or your test cases or your ut session ut session your training session is based on the end user activity if you are performing any testing in the development system in short unit testing you will be testing master record from the sap fico point of view we need to understand what kind of master records you have let's say gl master customer master vendor master cost center profit center internal order tax code bank master likewise for each master data we need to perform the testing to ensure that whether you are able to create the master and you are able to change master you are able to display the master similarly for the transaction data you have different areas wherein you will be recording the transactions like gl module transaction 
accounts payable transaction accounts receivable transaction accounts payable transaction asset accounting taxation cash accounting bank accounting various module related transactions will be there based on the business process based on the test script based on the bpml document each and every transaction we need to make sure we are executing and we are testing that it is working fine finally reports you need to make sure whatever the reports that we are providing or that we are proposing to the client to be used on their day-to-day -day business process or day-to-day -day business operations make sure you are able to execute all the reports and the reports are providing the output in order to get the output there must be a transaction in order to create a transaction there must be a master data in short your end user activities are interdependent on each other without master data user cannot create any transaction without a transaction you cannot pull any report your report is again classified into two reports related to master record report related to transaction record let's say i want to know how many gl accounts we have got in our company code to find out how many gl accounts we have got in our company code i must generate a report for my chart of account or gl master report similarly i want to know how many customers are there in our company code how many vendors are there how many cost centers we have how many profit centers we have how many bank accounts we have to get all this information we need to ensure we have sufficient reports available wherever possible the sap standard report if there is no sap standard report we will be talking about some kind of customization report this master data this transaction data this report is part of your testing uot and the training testing is based on end user activity training is based on end user activity your uot is also based on end user activity once we are clear with these are the end user activities whatever you do you are going to keep these end user activities in your mind because as a consultant you are supposed to test these end user activities from your side before you go and sit or before you inform your client that this functionality is now ready to be used when you inform to your client your client will also wants to test it once before he will say that i am okay with it when your client is testing it your client will be testing it in the quality system in the quality system it is always recommended your client will log in with his user id your client or your user always logs in with their respective user id because your users are not authorized to use everything when it comes to consulting as a consultant you will have authorization for everything because as a consultant you must look at everything in order to provide support in order to fix any issues in order to implement or in order to configure new functionalities so it is quite common that as a consultant your id will have access to everything but as a consultant in the production system you will be strictly having the display access so i will explain what are these roles authorizations accesses but when it comes to an end user end user will not have authorization for everything your end user authorization is limited when i say limited if i am talking about an end user let's say talking about an end user let's say i'll tell end user 1 he is working in accounts payable i will tell another end user he is working in accounts receivable i'll put another end user i'll say he is working in fixed assets another end user let's say he is working in bank now if you look at user number 1 let's say the user ajay who is working on accounts payable now he has got nothing to do with accounts receivable he has got nothing to do with fixed assets and then banking now the user who is working on accounts payable if this user is able to record information or if he is able to view the information related to accounts receivable fixed asset banks and all then this is not correct because the end user access is always limited is always restricted based on his role his role is only to perform accounts payable 
so he is strictly supposed to have authorization related to accounts payable related transactions again within accounts payable you will be having sub classification in accounts payable i will say only invoice processing when i say invoice processing this user is supposed to have authorization related to the invoice processing alone he cannot do any other activity apart from creating invoice processing which means this user i do not want to create any payment related transaction or any reports related to payment related or any other information i want this user to be restricted only for the invoice processing plus invoice display only these two things i want this user to access let's say another user within the accounts payable i want the other user to display the invoice and then process the payment look at the invoice report so in every organization in every department based on the nature of roles based on the nature of job descriptions every client will have certain activities predefined these users will be performing only these activities the other user will not be related to this i don't want other users to see this information your client will tell i don't want any other user to see this information please make sure this information is accessible or reviewed or opened only for the selected users now you need to make sure that these kind of controls are built in in the system to ensure that the data is secured no unwanted users or unauthorized users will not have access to the information on your company so for this to happen you need to achieve this based on something called user roles and authorizations if i talk about user roles and authorizations when you talk about user roles and authorization this is nothing to do with you are controlling what information to be seen what information to be accessed on the sap by default what you can do you can open any transaction on sap because there is something called sap all access when you provide sap all access user can access any transaction code which is available on the system but this is not given even to the consultant sap all access is not given even to the consultant because there are limitations you also have limitations if you are working on sap fico you are strictly supposed to work you are strictly supposed to make configuration or any other activity related to fico area only something related to mm you are not supposed to touch even though you are able to open those transactions it is not recommended with your user id you will make changes into other module related settings okay now especially when you talk about user roles and authorizations these are especially designed for end users your user roles and authorizations are especially designed for end users not for consultant as a consultant you will have access to open to view anything on sap system but as an end user you will not have so as a consultant you are like a developer you can go and open whatever you want on sap screen but as an end user it is not the situation you will have limited access you will have limited authorization when it comes to user authorization now it has got two things now we have two types of user interfaces in sap first one is your sap gui second one is sap fiori first one is your sap gui second one is your sap fiori this is applicable in ecc applicable in s4 hana this is sap fiori is applicable in s4 hana only in ecc 
this is not applicable not applicable in s4 hana in short your s4 your fury is not applicable this is not applicable in ecc okay this is not applicable in ecc and this is applicable in s4 hana only let me write to access any transaction slash type when i am talking about a transaction i am talking about gui when i am talking about a tile i am talking about fury to access any transaction or tile user must have the relevant role assigned okay to access any transaction or tile user must have the relevant role assigned if the relevant role is not assigned user cannot access the transaction or user cannot access any tile transaction is used in gui tile is used in fury when i say this we mean transaction is transaction is used in gui tile is used in fury now next point for gui related authorizations and for fury related authorizations okay for gui related authorizations we will use backend roles and here we will use front end roles for gui related authorization we will use back end role for fury related authorization we will be using front end role let's say for example if you take an example i will say users in accounts payable department i will say users in accounts payable department let's say i will classify as two things invoicing team is one and second one i will say payment team i would also say third one reporting team i'm saying that within the accounts payable we have got three departments or we have got three classifications one team who is responsible only for the recording of invoices the other team is responsible for making the payments the other team is responsible for making the reports i would also say fourth one master data team so i am listing four levels here what happened i clicked somewhere So please click on normal view. Sir, you change the view, sir. Uh, next the to view. that. Yeah. 
still giving this. Otherwise, I'll close and then reopen this. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, so we've got four teams here. One is invoicing team, the other one is payment team, reporting team, and master data team. Let's say there are three users here. Let's say user one, user two, user three, user four. There are four users in the invoicing team. And in the payment team, you're not supposed to have the same users here in the payment team you are supposed to have a different user who is not part of this because there is something called segregation of duties according to segregation of duties or according to the role authorization metrics whoever is authorized to create an invoice is not supposed to create or is not supposed to be authorized to create the payment so these four users cannot be having the payment related authorization so what i'll do i'll put something like user 5 i will put user 6 user 7 user 8 now reporting team i want to have in the reporting team let's say i will have two or three members From the reporting team, I'll say stop one sec. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, reporting team is uh, we can say the R to R team, no record to report yeah. team. All right. Okay. Thank you. User nine. I'll say user ten. Two users. From the master data, let me put another two users here. I'll put user 11. And I'll put user 12 here. Now, according to this, according to this, I said that this is what the data segregation or duties is segregated within our department. We have four type of teams. One is invoice team who will record only the invoices. One is payment team who are responsible for releasing the payment. Third one is reporting team who will make all the payable re reports at the end of the month. The fourth one is master data team who will be making the changes in the vendors or creating a new vendors. Now, when you talk about this, you have to look at the BPML list first. According to your BPML, according to your business process what are the transactions or what are the tiles that you will be accessing let's say from the invoice team i'll put t codes here So what I will do, I will put F-43, FB-60, and FB-03. This is what I want. This is what I want to be given access for the invoicing team. For the payment team, let's say I will give authorization. This is payment. This is... Payment, I would say F-53. These are all the transaction codes. And I'll put F-110 and FB-03. And reporting team, and here also I will put FBL-1 in. Here I'll put this one, FK-10 in. FBL-1H. 
these are the reports that I am giving access to the reporting team. For the master data team, I would say BP and XK01, XK02. This this T codes I am giving to the sir, master data. Been, sorry, sir, you have included ABL1 and in uh, payment team also, sir. Is it uh, including in reporting team only, right, sir? No, here you can give because okay. the payment team should know what is outstanding. To check okay. the outstanding, they need the vendor report. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay, now these are the transaction codes or the tiles that we are talking about. Now you need to make sure that when the user one logs into the SAP system, he can see only these three accesses. Even though he is logging into same SAP, these users are also logging into the same SAP. But when user one or two, three, four, when they enter into SAP, apart from these three transactions or apart from these three activities, they cannot do anything or they cannot see anything. Whatever they try to access, whatever they try to open, they will get an error message stating you are not authorized to this particular transaction, whatever they're trying to open. It simply gives an error message. You are not authorized to transaction code XYZ. Similarly, the person who is working in payment team, they will be able to access only these reports payment related transactions plus document display and vendor line item report transaction. Similarly for the reporting similarly for the master data team. Now this is the common requirement in every organization what wherever you work in any implementation project. This is one of your major activity as a FICO consultant. You need to make sure you're working on roles and authorizations. You will design you will design or you will get multiple roles created based on the business requirement. You will be able to understand the business requirement only when you sit and then discuss with the client. How you are segregating the duties within your accounts payable is every user authorized to do anything or you have any segregation of duties. Let's say these set of users will perform these activities. The other set of users will perform the other activities according accordingly. This information is provided to you by your client based on that information. You need to segregate prepare a master file for the user based on that list out all the transaction codes to be included in each role. This ro user role metrics or the user role file we have to provide it to the basis consultant and get it assigned or get it created. Once you say that the user, user roles are created, you have got two roles to be displayed here. We were talking about front end role. We were also talking about back end role. We are talking about front end role. We are talking about back end role. Now, how do you decide? which role to be created whether a front end role or a back end role now back end roles are created by basis team and front end roles are created by abap team so you will have to work with both basis team at the same time ABAP team to make sure that the roles are created according to the client requirement. Now as a consultant as a functional consultant you are the point of contact for your client and for your the technical team like your basis or ABAP whatever the queries confusions questions that they get they will ask you what should I give here should I put this this authorization or whatsoever you are also not the right person to decide it what you will do whatever the queries that you are receiving from your ABAP and from the basis you will get it clarified from the client you will get into a call or you will have a chart or a meeting with your client you will get these points clarified and then you will inform to your basis or ABAP accordingly based on that your ABAP consultant your basis consultant will create the respective role front end role and back end role point number one If we are working on ECC environment or ECC projects, 
we are working on ecc projects so we will be assigning back end roles to the users point number 2 if we are working on s4 hana projects we will be assigning both back end and front end roles these are the two points that we need to remember if you are working on ecc project you will be assigning only the back end roles if you are working on s4 hana project you will be assigning both back end plus front end roles now let's say how you will be creating these roles i'll put roles back end role and then front end role now when you are creating a back end role it always starts from z so always starts from z followed by module name same point this is always starts from z fury followed by the module name so considering this sorry okay considering this what i will be doing for the back end role i will be creating a role called z followed by module name you are creating it under fi right so i may put zfi underscore ap underscore inv i may create something like this this is what i may call it as my role zfi underscore ap underscore inv invoicing or invoice processing similarly for the same one front end role i will be starting from z fury what i'll put z fury underscore module fi underscore inv this is how i am able to create or this is how i will be creating a role now when i am creating a role i need to make sure the naming convention for the role is properly followed whatever the naming conventions that we are discussing now keep this role keep this naming convention as it is in your mind and whoever is asking you list out the same role same naming convention as it is now in this role what you are going to put you are going to put the transaction code and then the authorization object in this role you are going to include these t codes this role will include this transaction codes and this role will include the same transaction code tiles this i call it as tile here i call it as t code now this has become your 
back end role this has become your front end role this has become your front end role now if a user if a user is assigned with this this role in the user master or in the user profile if this role is assigned zfi underscore ap underscore inv on the gui screen on sap logon pad sap gui which means on this screen on this gui screen the user can open this particular transaction code okay if this role is assigned on the gui screen user can open the transaction code on the sap if this role is not assigned user cannot open any transaction code okay if you are assigning the back end role zfi underscore ap underscore inv user can access the transaction codes on the gui screen on the other side if you are assigning this role zfury underscore fi underscore inv user can see these tiles on the fury screen if you assign this role user can see these tiles on the fury screen now to open this fury tile user requires this back end role front end role will only display the icon on the fury screen back end role will allow user to proceed or enter inside the transaction code to see the transaction fury role on the fury screen to open the transaction back end role on the fury screen so in short if you are working on gui back end role is sufficient if you are working on fury back end role plus front end role both are required if you are working on ecc only back end role sorry if you are working on gui only back end role is sufficient if you are working on fury back end plus front end both roles must be assigned no exception for this in any project which is related to s4 hana this is a mandatory point that you must keep in your mind if somebody is asking you about what did you do in your implementation project this is one of the mandatory topic to be discussed because as a pico consultant to make sure that you will create the relevant or the respective roles in the in the each division or in the each department according to the user classification which you will from your client for that you must be in a position to understand what is role what is authorization how these are created and how you will get the requirement from your client on what basis you are going to provide the information or inputs to the basic consultant and then the abap consultant how you are going to test it so these points we need to understand later on we will be talking about what kind of a challenges you will face in this roles and authorization in real environment let's say once project is gone live users are posting the transactions if they do not have authorization for any particular transaction how you are going to verify how you are going to provide this thing authorization to the user this is another point we need to understand so one point i want you to remember here sir i have a question here sorry yes sir uh, in the left hand side we have uh, back end role uh, on gui screen okay uh, in the right hand side we have uh, front end role for uh, fury screen in order to see the uh, t codes or whatever tiles. right so in tiles, order to yes. open uh, tiles in order to open them we need a back end role in fury so what are the t codes those are same thing same t codes same t codes there are certain things which are fury specific those okay that fury related either program or if it is gui related t code will be there okay okay in the role make sure, be make sure those will be given twice for example let's say uh, zf z fury underscore fi underscore inv let's let's uh, call it as uh, one of the t, uh, t code so that will be given twice front end and back end so that we can view and then open in fury screen correct 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 okay thank you sir yeah 
so that means gui backend whatever we are giving it is same in fury backend backend is only same thing there is nothing called fury backend when you are using fury you must assign the backend role so the backend role is similar to gui ha in fury now let's say let me put this let's say role assigned to a user let me put another point role assigned to a user considering the two roles that we have created above point number 1 user 1 let's say working in ecc or gui only next user number 2 working in s4 hana gui and fury when you are using s4 hana you must be using fury you cannot say i am not using fury do not bring that point into picture that i will not use fury if you are using s4 hana you must use fury if you are using s4 hana no exception to it so the point itself is ruled out that I, if i am not using fury that question itself is invalid so let us not put that question very working on s4 hana you must be working on fury applications now here for this user you need to assign this role and in this you need to assign back end role plus front end role you must assign these two for a user who is working on s4 hana you must assign this role for a user who is working on ecc only then the user is able to access create an invoice if this role is missing user cannot create the invoice if this role is missing he cannot create he must have two roles who is working on s4 hana he will require only one role who is working on ecc clear up so mm -hmm. when we actually Trans start can. using the transactions when we actually start posting the entries again i will show practically by opening the user roles by opening the gui by opening the fury i'll open user profile i will open gui i will open fury three screens parallelly i will show to connect these three points whatever i am listing here on the excel sheet unless we see the sap screen unless we understand how entries are getting posted we will not be able to practically visualize what we are talking currently we are talking to make sure that we will remember right from the beginning what exactly is your role what exactly your activities as a consultant because during our journey we will be majoritarily spending time on configurations postings only but everything is dependent on this we must remember these points that is the reason we are talking now yeah uh, so we are assigning in fury we are assigning back end plus front end one is to view the tile and the other one is to access the tile correct correct yeah that's the reason you said like if we do not uh, assign uh, back end roles we won't be able to access the front end oh sorry yeah. sorry sorry if you don't assign the front end roles you won't be able to use the back end roles hmm. you're right okay so this so this jfi underscore ap underscore inv these are roles or these are t codes this is what role. is this called role role this is role inside the role you will be assigning the transaction code okay sir okay okay we will discuss i'll show all these things on the system practically but now we just wanted to have an idea you must be knowing about these points okay this is in general about your user roles and authorizations we talked about all this because we were talking about something called bpml when we talked about bpml when we talked about bpml we talked about bpml is the list of transaction codes 
this bpml document is used for creating the test cases test script at the same time creating the user testing sorry creating the unit testing document creating the uat testing document at the same time creation of your user roles and authorizations is also dependent on your bpml document so in case in case if somebody is asking you why do you prepare bpml document you must talk about these points you cannot say that this is of uh, yeah, ajay Declan. you sorry ajay you prepare this document on the new implementation project yes BPML. this is for the implementation projects on which stage you prepare this document this is during your initial stage only during your bbp preparation at that time only this is prepared is it possible we get like bp email points that are included in the project on the real time like uh, like i will share uh, the document. sample documentations yes i will show the samples i will share some samples okay thank you all right so after performing this testing so we were talking about hello ajay yes and go in the s4 ana in a s4 ana geo screen whatever we are performing and we can perform in the fear screen right correct so uh, why uh, sap will implemented sap fury we can we can we can uh, uh, do in geo screen itself everything right but in fury there are certain transactions which are fury exclusive for which which there is no transaction code let's say you are uh, opening gl master record there are two type of applications to open most of the transactions one is transaction based the other one is fury based when i say create gl account you will go to fs00 to create a gl account this fs00 is called as a transaction code the same fs00 can be accessed on fury application if you convert the transaction as a tile on the other side on fury you will have another application or another tile called manage gl accounts this manage gl account does not contain any transaction code this manage gl account tile is fury specific this will work faster than your goi transaction code if you are taking let's say 1 minute to create a gl account in fs00 in fury application you may be creating in less than 1 minute on the other side if you are generating any gl report let's say there are 10000 records in a gl report when you open fbl3n or when you open fagll03 assuming it is taking 15 minutes to give the output yeah when you take the using upload, that same database only right how it will work fast database same only right database is same but your tree code your transaction code contains the abap programming at the back end your fury application contains a different mechanism at the back end so which will works more faster than your abap programming at the back end so your fury applications will work even more faster than your transaction code okay these things i will show practically for a same report i will open t code for the same report i will open a fury specific report practically i will show you the okay. user interface the way you download everything will be more faster the kind of filters that you put everything is plug and play on your fury applications okay okay and and you are showing up where we are assign where we are assigning the roles and everything fury and everything right yes i'll show all these things whatever i am writing on the excel sheet we will see practically oh, oh. okay we are writing now only to make sure that we understand what points we must know what points we must understand before you learn sap fico or when you complete your sap fico course when you are attending any interview when you are talking to somebody when you are in any project these are all the mandatory points that we must know so now we are trying to get an idea about what is what later on in the upcoming sessions we will discuss in detail about everything with different other examples okay 
these points are only to create an idea that these points we must know these points we must remember these points we have to learn okay so now when you talk about testing you will be doing certain kind of a testing called unit testing this is called as ut next one user acceptance test this is called as uat next one system integration testing this is called as sit and regression testing this is called as rt these are the certain mandatory testing that you will be doing during your project in in any project unit testing user acceptance testing system integration testing and regression testing let's say whatever you do in the development system is called as your unit testing whatever you do in the quality system is called as unit user acceptance testing or uat system integration testing is nothing but testing between two modules you are testing fi with mm or you are testing st with fi or any other or any two different modules if you are testing collectively and data is flowing from one module to the other module that is where you are going to call it as system integration testing in short integration testing we normally hear some terminology called fi mm integration fi sd integration this fi mm fi sd integration is called as system integration testing there is something called regression testing this regression testing is performed especially when there is a configuration or when there is a program used by multiple company codes are used in multiple locations let's say i have a program or i have a report which is used by two company codes i have a program which is used by two company codes now i have made a change in the program i have made a change in the program now these changes are completed and tested now when i made a change in a program let's say this change is initiated by company code number 1 when the change initiated by company code number 1 is is made or is accommodated in the report when we normally test we test company code number 1 data whether it is working according to the requirement or not i see that based on the requirement in company code number 1 the data is coming as as expected if the user or client had said okay this is working fine now you need to verify you need to make sure the changes that you made in any report which is used dynamically by different company codes are not creating any impact change in report for the purpose of meeting a requirement of company code number 1 is not creating any impact is not creating any problem in company code number 2 to make sure these kind of things whether the functionality is not getting affected by making certain modifications or corrections is called as regression testing this is also testing that you will be performing tomorrow when somebody is asking as a as a functional consultant or as a fico consultant what kind of a testings you have done make sure you are representing unit testing user acceptance testing system integration testing and regression testing these four testings you have done in your system and you must be in a position to provide an example what did you do in unit testing uat sit rt make sure we will have an example in the upcoming sessions you will have so many examples in each of these testing scenarios once testing is completed next thing you will be having documentations what kind of a documentation we normally prepare as a fico consultant you will be preparing business blueprint or solution design document kds document bpml document let's say scope document ut document uat document sit document rt document these things are expanded here unit testing 
user acceptance system integration regression testing and user manual roles and authorization metrics okay this kind of documentation we will be maintaining i am just writing the mandatory documents there will be a list which we will add in the upcoming sessions next one training sessions you will also be conducting training sessions so training to end users you will have to conduct training to the end user this is also a role that you need to play when you are in any project next one you must know about cutover activities when you talk about cutover activities so these are also called as open client activities some call it as cutover some call it as open client activities in prd prd is nothing but production system like creation of number ranges maintenance of your tax codes validations all these kind of things master data upload transaction data upload cost estimation material ledger activation cost center planning budgeting all these kind of things are part of your cutover activities or open client activities all these activities you must be aware and next one you must be aware of go live date cutover date and catch over date and for which month we receive tb4 legacy data upload or migration so all these points we must be aware before we proceed further with the regular configuration on sap fico now these points we will understand slowly okay let's say as an example if i say go live date is today 25 25 july 2023 and based on this your cutover date will be always previous month go live previous month end will be your cutover date according to july the last month is june i will put 30 june 2023 will be my cutover date and catchover date will be go live previous date if you are going live on 25 catchover will be 24 July 2023 will be your catchover date, and for What? which month we will receive the trial balance? This is always go live previous month. This is your June 2023. You will be receiving the trial balance. But these dates you must understand on what basis you are going to freeze these dates. Otherwise, it is not possible for us to understand. or practice cutover related activities or the implementation stages Ajay, once this is done acha in yeah. catch over activity uh, in catch over what activities you do actually because this is new concept for me it is only the master data and the transaction data that is created on the go live date first until the go live previous date which means from 1st july to 24th july whatever the masters you have whatever the transactions that you have you will be loading them as part of catch over data okay okay next one what happens on go live when you're talking about go live you must know what happens on go live okay so
all consultants and client users will gather and one person from the management will post the sales entry in sap production system followed by cake cutting this is what happens on your go live date because somebody might put this kind of a questions in your interview or somebody might casually ask what happens on your go live everybody talks about go live go live what happens on go live you must know what happens on go live on go live everybody will gather your client and your consulting team will gather somebody from the management let's say your cfo or somebody from the management level will log into sap production system on go live and they will create a sales order delivery and billing because the first transaction on go live or the first transaction in sap production system is always a sale document as a sentiment when you do a sale you will get revenue your intention is to make profit so as a sentiment everybody will record sales transaction first on your go live date after that there will be a cake cutting followed by your lunch treat or whatsoever this is what you literally have to tell if somebody is asking this question okay once this is done from there onwards you are going to start your hyper care support after go live we will provide hyper care support for one month or three months or i'll simply say for one two three months based on the project agreement either one month hyper care support or three months hyper care support after hyper care support we will hand over project to support in short annual maintenance contract team so we will provide kt sessions and documentation to support consultant this is what you will do at the end of your project once you are coming out from your implementation project because implementation project is time based project once your implementation time is completed you are going to hand over the project to the support like amc annual maintenance contract or some also call it as ams annual maintenance support amc or ams support team you will hand over the project by way of handing over all the documentation whatever you have prepared blueprint config documents all these things will be provided to the support team at the same time you will give them the knowledge transfer or kt session once this is completed your project is officially closed as an implementation if there are any open points from the implementation will be handed over to the support team to take it forward okay these points i want you to go through so that from tomorrow onwards we will be talking about the basic configuration steps basic configuration steps that are involved in our sap fico what are the points related to configs that we must remember these points we will be starting to discuss from tomorrow onwards but make sure you go through all these points so that you will have a fair idea fair understanding about what exactly happens what you need to do as a fico consultant yes you can ask if you have any questions now um <coughs> And is our uh, training you will give one week stage actually before go live? Uh, during UAT. During UAT. And what about the integration testing you do on quality or where you do? 
integration testing is done at the both at the development and at the quality any testing so, before you proceed with the client you should have tested from your side as a consultant in development okay so in uat testing there is no involvement of the client side is that right uh, um, because this this is integration between only implementation partner team is that right uh, ajay repeat your question again uh, this integration testing is between implementation partner only there is no client side any end user get involved in this integration testing no no no, no. end user right? only will do it integration testing yes because let's say when you're talking about integration you're talking about FIMM integration yeah what will happen one user from the purchasing team will create a purchase order purchase okay. order will be created by one user ID which is part of the logistics team or purchasing team and he must be in a position to create a purchase order without any errors once he creates the purchase order another user will take this purchase order Another user will take this purchase order. He will process the GRN and the other user should not face any problem while creating the GRN. Once this GRN is created, this will create an accounting entry. Another user from the accounting team will open this accounting entry and he will verify whether the accounting is updated properly or not. Once accounting is validated for GRN, another user from the accounting team will open the purchase order and he will record the invoice. When he is recording the invoice, he should not face any problem. He must be in a position to successfully post the invoice. This is what happens in your integration testing. Different users will be involved to do the testing, not by a single user ID. PO is created by one user, GRN processed by another user, invoice is processed by another user. Okay. And so same thing for the regression, sorry, for the regression testing too. No, regression by, testing is not by the client. Regression testing is done by the consultant only. Okay. So for the integration testing, you need to give them only test script and UT document. Is that right? The same thing Correct. like for, okay. the UT testing, you will be there along with the user when mm -hmm. it comes to implementation. When it comes to support during UAT, you will not be there with the user. They will do it and they will send you the document. But in implementation, you must be present along with the users. Okay. Yes, sir. So during implementation, uh, training is given to the user uh, in UAT, right? Yes, before UAT, we normally give. In some projects, what will happen after UAT, we will give. It depends on the uh, project timelines that you have. Sometimes you may be running short of time. So what management will decide? Okay, they will tell that consultant will guide the users to complete the UAT. And after the go live or before the go live, we will schedule the UAT session, the training sessions. So but ideally, this the is, user will be sitting at the same place and they will be interacting or be instructing the user to do uh, the things. Right? Correct. If you are, if the consultant is sitting at the client location, everything will happen physically in a conference room or in a meeting room if the consultant is in a different place client is in a different place then this will happen in a teams meeting or any other meeting conference conference call and sir kt sessions are given to whom the support team or to whom sir to the users which one kt session KT session, repeat your question again. Sorry, I could not hear properly. Uh, uh, sir, KT sessions are given by consultant to whom, sir? KT sessions are given by implementation consultant to the support consultant. Let's say <clears throat> I am part of an implementation project. Implementation project will be closed by this month. End. Our implementation team will be providing hyper care support. Let's say implementation completed. Hyper care support is until 31st July. From 1st August onwards, the support will be taken care by the AMS team. Now you are part of AMS FICO consultant. I am part of implementation FICO consultant. From 1st August onwards, I will not be supporting this client. Client is not supposed to call me. Client is not supposed to reach out to me for any errors, for any issues. From 1st August, client is supposed to call or reach out to you. This is an official email communication given to everybody. So by end of 31st 
July, I have to hand over everything to you. Without knowing anything, it is not possible for you to handle the client, understand the system, understand the issues, what is open, correct? Huh? To make sure so you will continue from where I left, I have to provide you the KT. Sir, implementation team uh, consultant and support uh, team consultant are different or they are from different. same company or it is different. Company. It can be from same company. It can be from different company. Both are possible. Okay. okay. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, for Let's say, for example, uh, uh, if I will be selected as a uh, FICO consultant, uh, uh, to one of the client company uh, for implementation project okay so let's say uh, the project uh, will get over in one month and then after uh, once it get over right uh, the project uh, so what would be the what would be my role sir for example so after implementation still i'll be working something on that or uh, i just want to know my roles uh, for once your project. implementation project duration is completed you will be released from the project because if you are assigned it to a project whatever the amount that company is spending on you let's say they are paying for your salary they are paying for any other benefits to you all this cost is deducted from the project cost if project is over where should i charge your cost your consulting cost or your consultant cost if you are assigned it to any project from that project billing i will be i will be deducting your expense if you are not assigned yeah, it to any project, this will be treated as loss to the company. Company will say that you are on bench. You would have heard some term called bench. No. So there is, let's say, if you are working as a consultant, we normally call it as we are working for project. Correct? Huh? Okay. Okay. If you are working on any project, then you call it as you are assigned it to a project. When you are assigned it to a project, based on your consulting to a client your company is making profit because there is something yes. called billing yes when you are generating the billing company will make profit from your billing okay if you are not assigned to any project you are not supporting for any project you are not involving any project you are not generating any revenue to the company because from your services company is not able to get any money from the client because you're not officially working on any project, correct? Yes. When you're not officially working on any project, you are called as you're on bench. When you're on bench, company is making salary from its pocket. Let's say company is not making any revenue from your services for that particular month. That is why those who are on bench will get scared <coughs> that I'm on bench, I'm not getting any project. I don't know what will happen. Because okay. some companies, if they do not have any projects, they will tell that we do not have any projects. You can see for another jobs in the outside. You can switch on to your job if you find any good opportunity. We will give you two months time. We will give you three months time. Some companies will tell like this also. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Sir. Uh... As a consultant, we have to give all the end user training or a particular person like a CTM core team member. We have to give a, a, a training and the core team member will be uh, uh, trained that users. It will happen eh? like this. Yes, both are possible. Sometimes what will happen, you will be conducting the training session only to the CTMs like a core team members or subject matter expert. This is point number one. What these guys will do, they will train their end users, their department, their team. Point number two, you may be sending the meeting invite to all the people, all the users who are working on accounts payable or any other module. Let's say 20, 30, 40 people will join the conference call or the meeting uh, invitation that you sent. And you will have to train everybody and you will strictly tell that any questions that they have, they will have to ask at the end. Because these training sessions will get recorded after the training session is completed. You will be sharing these recording sessions with them. So that they can go through the training sessions later on. Somebody may be absent. Somebody may be working in some other locations. Not possible for everybody to attend, right? Yes, sir. 
so this training sessions will get recorded and will be shared with the client this is one of the uh, checklist when you hand over project to the support partner okay sir. got it thank you yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I have one doubt uh, that as you uh, mentioned early uh, that uh, sir, go live uh, project go live date is 25th July this uh, current date and uh, cut over date is 30th June uh, 2023 uh, and catch over date is also 24 July the previous date of uh, go live date. Uh, then we are uploading the balance at, until the, we can get the trial balance from uh, client uh, up to till 30th June. And what about the first July to 24 July um, master data or transitional data? Means uh, uh, we are been, not doing that. Uh, yes. That has to be uploaded before July month closure. Before you close July month, everything must be uploaded. So you will be providing templates, master data template, transaction data template, maybe on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Your client will fill up the data and share it with us. Okay. Okay. But we need to make sure the catchover data is completed before that month close. Before the month close, okay. Before the go live date, right? Catchover data must be close before go live date. Okay. Not before go live date, before month close date. Hmm. July 24 is your catchover date. So your catchover period is yes. 1st July to 24 July. The data of 1st July to 24 July must be uploaded hmm. before 31st July. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, before you close July month, all the data related to July must be uploaded. Sir, all okay. the managed names uh, tile in Fury do not have T codes, right? Some will not have T codes, some will have the T codes. Both are possible. But all the managed names are only specific to Fury, not Fury. To uh -huh. If you're talking specifically to manage, you're right. But there are certain uh, T codes which will contain that name called manage. Okay. But majority of the manage will not have T code. You're right. It is only Fury based application. Clear? Huh? Ajit, on the PR process, you will talk like uh, means uh, like yeah, once like we start talking about the configs, we will be mm -hmm. talking about the TR process, system landscape TR. We will be talking maybe in this week itself. And what no uh, change request like uh, uh, what is the process for the change request after the go live after the yes. uh, production release? Uh, so that process you will be uh, explained at the training end actually okay. No, initially I will give an overview detailed yeah. discussion. We will do it towards the end And your ISAP also Yes, okay. Thank you yeah. and Once you start the actual configuration you will be creating a scenario like go live date will be this Cutover date will be this then you will proceed in the same way the teaching or how we will proceed like the exact way a real consultant works or how you do yes in the same way we will do it but we will not go based on the time base but the way that you configure is exactly the same way that you work in a project i will tell you the timelines that you will have to follow everything in the similar way you will be having in your real project Hello, IJ. Uh, is, is my understanding correct that for each of these uh, bases that we are doing now, we're going to come back to them a little bit more in detail uh, later? Yes. For example, uh, understanding uh, the relationship, uh, for example, between the validation assignment and then uh, the rules and authorization, are, are we expected to do in, uh, explain these differences somebody is noisy and then uh, understanding also for example the relationship between uh, how to pull out pn uh, pnl statements uh, and then at the same time how to hide the pnn statements from uh, 
uh, those who are not supposed to see any data on profit and loss uh, for, for the company, for example. And then uh, just things like that. Can you at some point be able to paint the picture in our mind, for example, when we go through all the different documents that we write after we take a step, take, for example, the configuration statement. If somebody were to ask you, for example, uh, the last configuration uh, document that you worked on, approximately how many pages were that? And also when you, you did your testing, uh, you have to put down a test uh, a document uh, that documenting that you did the testing, approximately how. And so we have a picture of what small pre projects look like and then big projects also look like. Are we going to come to all of these or these things should factor in right now? Yes. I will be showing the samples of each of these points that we're discussing. The way we create a configuration document. I'll take some simple configuration. I'll prepare a document. How you will put the T code path, how you will put the screenshot. Do we directly put a screenshot or you take the screenshot, you will put it on paint, you will highlight that screenshot with what you are updating, and then you will put any explanation at the bottom. And how exactly the format looks like. Similarly, your user manual, how you will prepare. If you're preparing any testing, unit testing, how it will be done. Your user acceptance testing, how this will be done. How you are going to prepare BPML document, blueprint, these samples we will be seeing practically in our sessions. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. So please, uh, in that list, do you in, include? Uh, the, the, the actual different core points when we are doing uh, TR, uh, uh, when we are doing transport request movements. So I remember yes. from the beginning, you, you made a statement like uh, in a client 100, after we do our configuration, you, you rather go to a client 200 and you do a call up of the TR. And once you are satisfied with that, and then you go back to clan 100, you are doing a push into. And so I, I just want to make sure that we understand all those steps. Uh, when you are doing a particular transaction, are you calling up or you're pushing the data? Yes. I'll show all this by executing in the system directly. All right. Thank you. Okay, all right then. So we'll Hello. close for today. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, sir. No, no, go uh, ahead, go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Actually, uh, on Golayuna, one person from the management team will post the sales in uh, sales entry. You told me, right? So why they need to post the uh, sales entry? Because the first transaction, nobody wants to create any expense. First transaction, nobody wants to create any asset. Nobody wants to create any liability because for you to buy an asset, you need to spend money, correct? Yes. You don't want to have any liability at the beginning. You don't want to have any expense at the beginning. So initial, the first transaction, you always wanted to have something in a profit making sense to an organization. What will bring profit to an organization? Only a sale, correct? That is why on yes, yes. any golet we will be creating only the sales transaction. Some people will ask this question just to check whether you really worked or not. You, we may be telling that I worked on an implementation project. They might simply put a question. Can you tell me what happened on golet day? If you're silent for that question, then it, it gives the hundred uh, question marks open in the interviewer mind. You got my point, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have a small question. Sir, we have negative testing and positive testing also, right? Correct. It, uh, it, where it comes, sir? It is in regression or what? Where? Normal only. It's, it's called as negative testing. There is nothing called positive testing. Your normal testing is always positive testing. Negative testing is like, let's say, if I am posting debit to an account my expectation is that i one particular account should always go debit balance only 
if i am able to post credit balance in, also into that account i call it as a negative testing something which should not happen whether it is happening or not that is your negative testing okay we do in which phase sir, that one that that you do in both development and quality no no which phase which phase i am asking which phase during ut only okay during your testing phase okay sir uh, ams is full form annual maintenance support or application management support sir some call it as application maintenance some call it as annual maintenance people use it with different terminologies for it okay i heard that uh, application management support hmm? correct that is also okay. correct okay fine sir yeah okay 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 thank you sir hello sir um you did mention that we are going to form a draft um, out of the business, uh, a rough draft out of the business requirement document. This business requirement document, um, I believe you said it is the as, as is, which is um, understanding the business, um, the client's um, business. This document, is it, um, are we the one that's supposed to come up with this document or is it the project manager? Or let's say if they have like a business analyst. Are they the ones that are supposed to come up with this, doc with this document so we can use it to make a rough draft before coming up with the blueprint? For any project in any organization, all the documentations that we are talking about are already available of previous project of previous client. Okay, what we will do, we will take the previous client documents as references or the templates in short. In that template, you are going to edit the data which is client specific. Otherwise, the document around 70 to 60 to 70 percent is fixed content only the 20 to 30 percent will be client specific we will not be making any document from the scratch it's already existing document you will be modifying the document according to the client business process okay because the reason i'm asking is that you said we have to hold like on um, workshops or interviews um with the client so i wanted to know the, the precise person which is supposed to be the one that is supposed to hold those interviews is it supposed to be the project manager since the business requirement document is like from the initial stages so um i just wanted to know the person that is supposed to um project the manager one. will be part of it along with the project manager the respective module one consultant will be there not the whole project team will be present Let's say one day project manager will be talking about or one day we will be discussing about the finance related process for finance related process along with the project manager you need the finance consultant or FICO consultant who is the senior consultant or the lead consultant who is able to understand the requirement who is able to propose the solution. Correct? Yeah, so not it may not be the actual consultant who is working on that project. It may be a consultant who is leading that FICO module. And he will understand the business process. He will pass on the inputs to the consultant who is going to work on this project. Okay, so so directly on the spot, let's say um, the client is um, proposing their their current um, business scenario. Are we is the lead consultant supposed to like propose any ideas at the at the spot, or are they supposed to probably um, do the draft, do the rough draft, and then propose an idea when um, handing over the blueprint document? So if this scenario is straightforward, which we already worked before, you can propose the solution on the spot. If you feel that scenario is something tricky, that you will say that this is possible, but we will check and then come back to you with the appropriate or more best fit solution for it. Something like that we will tell, and then we will take a day or two days time. We will get that scenario tested in the in one of our test systems. We will propose the solution, whether there is any standard functionality for it or if you have to do any customization for it okay 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 thank you um just one more thing during that stage is there maybe let's say the client wants to um why they are you know telling us their business processes is there like a sandbox which it will be working us through for us to maybe see some how their current system is or they are just going to be telling us um on the meeting how is it going to look like they will only tell us at high level they will not show any system and all for that we, we are going to have detailed walkthrough sessions with the core team members 
okay okay from the management team we will understand the business process at high level the detailed process we will be sitting with the core team members so they will literally open the legacy system they will show us every process this is how we are doing these are the reports this is the data these are the challenges they will tell in detail okay thank you very much yeah okay all right then so we'll close for today if you have any further questions i'll take your questions tomorrow okay then good night we'll connect at the same time tomorrow yeah good night, good night. thank you